In the interest of anonymity, I will say only that I work in healthcare. We seem to get more than our fair share of strange patients. One specifically had been on my mind lately. The girl in question, a recent admission, had a story disturbing enough to run through the interdepartment grapevine fairly often. Tired of hearing the same gossip repeated endlessly, I pulled and read her file, intending to debunk the rumors. I wish I hadn't. The following is a cleaned-up version of her personal written account. This is all a misunderstanding. Honestly, I'm fine. I am not the problem. There's someone else out there responsible for this. They're doing this to torture me. I shouldn't even be here. I've had some issues with my body image. That much is true. I was actually a failing yet another diet when this first happened. We were out celebrating Becky's promotion. The five of us were at dinner. It was a really nice restaurant, but I can't remember which. And my diet willpower was running on empty. We'd all had a glass or two of wine, and by the time my salad came, I'd resolved to eat only half of it. And only that much so as to not cause any scene on Becky's night. The girls pestered me whenever I refused to eat. Still, I couldn't help but think that it was no coincidence that the skinniest out of all five of us was the first to get promoted. We'd all graduated more than a year ago, and the real world was like a slap in the face. None of us were really where we wanted to be, except Becky, of course. Hunger filled me with constant pain, and hating myself for it stressed me out to the limit. So when the waiter put cheese on my salad, I didn't stop him. I wanted to throw the salad away, to refuse to eat it, but I was so hungry. And then two bites in, angry, but putting on a happy face for the girls, I found a long black hair wrapping around pieces of lettuce. It immediately disgusted me, and I'd almost eaten it without realizing it. We got our meals for free, and the girls didn't even bother me when I couldn't bring myself to eat it. The hair had knocked out my hunger completely. I was on cloud nine for the next day or two. I wasn't hungry. I wasn't stressed. It was amazing. I thought I'd stumbled onto some great new form of self-control. But the girls thought otherwise. Or maybe, maybe just Becky. See, I was at lunch with Andrea when the hunger began to reach a breaking point again. Depleted, sad. I gave in and ordered a large salad. Andrea smiled and said something about being there for me if I needed to talk. I bet she was in on it. In my memories, her smile seems vaguely sinister and mocking, as if she was anticipating what was happening next. I found a fingernail in my salad. A fake red fingernail. Those things are disgusting. There's so many germs under fake nails. I know. Lunch was free again, but I couldn't bring myself to eat. The shock and disgust had again knocked out my hunger completely. Part of me was relieved and empowered. I was going on two weeks without eating, and this whole disgust thing was really helping me lose weight. But I'm not crazy or stupid. I know that you have to eat sometimes. Another day or two passed and I ordered a chicken salad while at brunch with Becky. She kept gloating on and on about her new job, about how her boss was vaguely hitting on her. I hated her so much. Secretly. And even if outwardly I was happy for her. I was mainly focused on my salad, though. It was sweet relief. Finally eating. Until I bit down on something hard and squishy. I spit it out quickly, and I remember Becky's exact words. Oh my god, is that a toe? I remember staring at the thing as it sat on my napkin. It was mushed, ground up, red, and, and, and cooked a little, but a bone clearly stuck out of it. The entire place shut down temporarily after that, but nobody could figure out where the toe had come from. Obviously... None of the employees were missing it, but Becky basked in the intention from the scandal. She even got on local television, even though it was my salad that had the toe in it. It's a travesty. People can get seriously sick if they accidentally eat things like that, she said to the reporter. I was starting to wonder whether she had something to do with it. See, the shock overwhelmed me, depleting my hunger for a little under a day, but my relief and enjoyment it was short. I knew I had to start eating again sooner rather than later. Not up for any more of Becky's sick pranks, I decided to scope out the vending machines at the mall. I hated myself so much right about then, staring at candy bars and feeling weak. 
but I had to eat. And I had no willpower left. Chocolate would make everything right. I bit into the thing. So amazing. Sweet, sweet chocolate. It was only two bites in when I saw something poking out between the wrapper and the candy bar. Halfway down. Pulling the wrapper back. I couldn't help but hurl it onto the floor as I puked up what I'd eaten. Pressing between the wrapper and chocolate was what was unmistakably a flap of skin. Had it been sliced off some body? Traces of blood still... God. But how the hell had Becky done it? How had she known? I was so full on terror and anger then, even if a tiny part of me had been relieved to throw up the two bites that I'd taken. Tortured but still fighting off my own urge to not eat, I ordered a slice of pizza at the food court. It came with a large bubble in the crust. Sickly, despairing, I ripped it open, finding what looked like someone's cornea cooked inside. God damn it, Becky! She had to be somewhere around, tracking me, doing this to me. Did she have the help of all these girls? I drove. By nightfall, I ended up across the state line. I pulled into the backwater restaurant that I'd never heard of, relieved that I ordered a hamburger from the polite old man who probably owned the place. There was no way that Becky or the girls could interfere with my food here. The hamburger slid in front of me on a quaintly decorated plate. It looked like the most delicious thing ever. I still considered not eating. I still considered continuing my diet, and I hated myself for giving in. But I didn't want to die. You know, people have to eat. I paused before biting in. Sliding back the bun, I investigated the contents. Everything seemed normal. Until I lifted the tomato from the lettuce. I couldn't tell what it was at first. A pinkish, grayish blob, a, a, a bump in the ketchup. I lifted it up by a stringy bit and stared at it until I finally understood. It was a piece of brain matter. I would have thrown up, but my heaving stomach had nothing in it. I drove away from there as fast as I could, continuing in random directions. I didn't know how Becky and the girls are tracking me or, or predicting what I would eat, but I had to evade them. Candy bar from a gas station? Nope. Ch chicken nuggets from a drive through Nope. I still don't know how they did it. I even begged a younger kid to make me a sub from start to finish, watching the entire process, making sure nothing was in it. He handed it to me. I opened it up and... Oh god, I still remember his expression of confusion and horror as I screamed, but a... A strange calm came after that. Three weeks. Three weeks without eating. Four? I knew I would die if I didn't eat. I had this strange thought. I had this idea of a place they couldn't predict, couldn't make disgusting and inedible. I found it. I did. I beat them. I found the most delicious salad, and I ate it, desperately gorging, knowing that I was finally saved. But I'll be honest, that wasn't what I expected to find the first time. I. It makes sense now, though. When I cracked his skull open with that pipe, I almost couldn't believe it. He fell, and chicken salad spattered across the pavement. Supple green lettuce, crunchy and stringy. Strips of chewy chicken, that dressing. The dressing was to die for. I was finding pieces of people in my food no matter where I ate, so the only logical place to find something edible. The only logical place was inside people. We have to feed her intravenously. Normal food terrifies and disgusts her. The whole thing makes me wonder how, in this day and age, we can still let the media impose unreasonable body images so powerfully on us. Though she's not the strangest patient that we have here, she she interests me because of her ability to manipulate the nurses, apparently. And nobody ever did figure out who helped her. She convinced somebody to sneak body parts into her food the first few times we tried to feed her. At least, that's the only explanation for those incidents that makes sense. Read some more files. And... 
they continue to disturb me. <laughs>